welcome to this episode where we are going to discuss three things that hold teachers back from moving forward into their futures. So let's go ahead and dive into these. First, I'm going to tell you what those three things are, and then we are going to dive into specifics of them. And I'm going to give you kind of some homework or ways to resolve those limited mindset things and, and other fears that hold teachers back. So let's go ahead and jump in. The three things that we're gonna, going to talk about today that hold teachers back are first, a limited mindset. Second, being overly uh, perfectionistic, wanting so much of a plan that we don't move forward past planning. And then third, simply fear. Fear of a lot of unknowns and things associated with it. So let's dive first into a limited mindset. And in true teacher-like fashion, let's do a little bit of what it looks like and what it sounds like, okay? A little bit of looks like, sounds like activity. A limited mindset when it comes to teachers and opportunities for their future oftentimes looks like not even exploring or thinking about what other options and opportunities are out there. What does it sound like? Some things that you might hear in your mind or maybe say out loud would be phrases like, well, I'm not qualified to do anything else other than being a teacher. My degree is in teaching and therefore that's what I'm qualified to do. A limited mindset also sounds like no one hires teachers. Okay. What does a limited mindset feel like? It can feel very restrictive. It can, you can feel like you're stuck or trapped. It can feel like, oh, I'm in a dead end job, or you can just feel very limited. None of those are positive things. Okay. So again, first off, a limited mindset is one of the things that holds teachers back. What about the second thing? Being overly perfectionistic or, or really, really planned out. Sometimes I refer to this as kind of, there are different teacher types and, and this type we refer to as perfectionistic patty. Well, perfectionistic and planned out patty. Teachers are incredible at making plans. And this is the category that I, that I fall into. It took me years to go from, I knew I needed to do something else to actually doing something else. And all of that time I was brainstorming a lot, researching a lot, trying to make plans to have this perfect path. Right. Um, and and a, with a lot of teachers, that's, that's the case. So what does it look like? What does it sound like? This, this thing that holds teachers back, it looks like taking years to make a move to make a change. It looks like researching so many different options. Uh, it looks like making plans, but not taking action to move on those plans. Okay. Um, and sometimes action is later taken, but oftentimes it's when someone is in such a hard spot, like they're kind of past a good point with where they are. What does it sound like? to kind of be held back by some of this perfectionism or this, you know, I have to have a really clear methodical process and plan um, and full preparation. I have to be incredibly well prepared. What does that sound like? Well, it can sound like maybe some of the self-talk is, oh, I can't do this until I have a perfect plan or I can't go forward until I have perfect preparation. I can't get one of these other jobs until I have a degree or a certificate in it. I, I can't do these things until I'm legitimate and having a degree or a certificate is going to let me and let hiring managers, let companies know that I am worthy or qualified. Okay. Instead of thinking of their skill set, just thinking about certification. Okay. Um, and it can also sound like some of the self-talk of, I can't apply to this job if I don't match every bullet point that's on a job description or know everything, or if I haven't experienced everything, I can't do this. Okay. There's a lot of can'ts. And again, 
these aren't, these aren't positive thoughts. They're not positive vibes. Okay. And it, it really can lead us in a very slow to progress kind of a, at that kind of a pace. Next fear. And these are, these are legitimate in a lot of ways, but we're going to go over some homework items for all of these as well. So what are some of the specific fears that hold a lot of teachers back and that I personally relate with from, <clears throat> excuse me, from having experienced all of this? So what are some of those specific fears that teachers oftentimes are afraid of in making a move? <clears throat> some of them include, <clears throat> excuse me, some of them include, what would life be like without insurance that's provided for me? Or well, I can't do it because of not having certain benefits, or I wouldn't have tenure as kind of job security the way that I do now, or a predictable pay scale. Um, all of these things relate with, with fear that is oftentimes very associated with a very conservative uh, lifestyle. And that's common. That's common for teachers. It's very understandable. Oftentimes fear is something that's trying to protect us from hard negative consequences, right? And so, so they come from a good place. But let's talk about what can we do to overcome limited mindsets, to overcome being overly perfectionistic, and to overcome fears to help us to move forward on our personal paths. So here is some of your homework. And I want you to, as I go through some of these items of what you can actually do, I want you to think about, uh, to identify three. I want you to identify three that you can act on and implement that will help you to overcome any hesitation or anything that might be holding you back. So first of all, with a, let's talk about homework that can address our mindset issues. If you feel like, well, I'm just a teacher, I can't do something else. I'm not qualified to do something else. Then my homework for you is to take what teacher really is and dissect it into about a hundred different things. Okay. We can do that with an activity where you take a piece of paper and a pen and you jot down three different columns. In the first column, you're going to write down your day as a teacher in 15 minute intervals. In the second column, you're going to title it as soft skills. These are people skills. I want you to write down what you're doing in those 15 minute intervals. As far as interacting with people, communication skills, explaining things, and so much more. Your third column is going to be hard skills. So that's maybe tasks that you're doing. Maybe it's software that you're working with, educational software or, or other things. It's, um, yeah, skills that you have that aren't necessarily people skills, but hard skills. Okay. And then I want you to brainstorm what, looking at these skills I have, people skills, soft skills, and hard skills. What are some companies or some scenarios, some work scenarios when that ability to communicate so incredibly well with other people or to lead a discussion or to help cooperate people or, or manage tasks. What are some other scenarios that those skills are needed in? And what are some opportunities related with those? Then just brainstorm what, what might that, what opportunities can that open for your future? So if you have a limited mindset about your ability to contribute in the world beyond the classroom, that's the homework for you. What if what you struggle with is your strength of planning and preparation? If you find yourself in that category of being a planned out perfectionistic patty, then here are some homework options for you. First of all, acknowledge what an incredible strength it is to be great at planning and preparing and doing things really, really, really well. We just don't want that strength to become our weakness in this scenario. So I want you to trust that you're skilled and that you're excellent at what you do, even when it's somewhat on the fly. It's just how you roll. If you are this type, 
then you're not satisfied with not doing things incredibly well. But we don't want that to hold you back anymore. You're just really good at doing a great job of what you do. So I also want you to remind yourself that you don't need a piece of paper, a certificate or a degree that tells you you have skills and that tells you you're legitimate. You already are. You're incredible at so many things that you do. We're just going to identify what those skills and interests are and help you move forward in that direction. You also don't need permission to apply to a job. That permission doesn't come through a degree and it doesn't come from a certificate. It comes from yourself. So allow yourself permission to at least apply, to at least look and inquire. And then last of all, I want you to let someone else decide if you can have an opportunity or not. Don't disqualify yourself. You know, leave that up to a hiring manager or leave it up to a company, but don't be the one that disqualifies yourself before even trying or putting your name in the hat for an opportunity. You don't have to be completely planned out and feel like you've experienced everything, learned everything. A lot of people, most people learn a lot on the job. Okay. So let yourself move forward. And what about the category of fears, especially if there's some of these financial fears or, or a very conservative nature, those, they make a lot of sense. Here's what you can do to help overcome those. First of all, if it's a fear of, well, I'm not going to have these benefits or, you know, this about retirement, things like that. While you are still a teacher, you can go ahead and create your own 401k account or your own Roth account or whatever kind of account you want. You can create that while you're still a teacher and then have that as you move forward. For me personally, I created one after I was out of the classroom and then I rolled um, my other account into it. It worked out great. What if you're afraid about insurance and not having that as part of a package that your company might provide. Now, a lot of companies provide insurance, but some don't. The, one of the first jobs that I took after being a teacher didn't provide insurance for me. So what can you do? Go ahead and just call one of the insurance companies. Simply inquire and find out, instead of just living in fear of the unknown, how much does insurance cost monthly? And, and they can give you the details. Then I also want you to look at, with some of the jobs that you might be interested in, how much do they typically make in your geographic area? And could that or would that counterbalance some of the expenses that wouldn't be covered? You know, if the job might not have insurance, would the increase in pay in those job opportunities cover it? So as we find out the information, it can help the fear go away. Sometimes the biggest um, hurdles or stumbling blocks are simply the unknown and they don't have to be unknown anymore. There's so many tools online and resources to be able to find out these things pretty quickly, actually. And then last of all, when it comes to fear or, or, you know, this conservative nature of well, what about the finances and things like that? I want you to think, what is the cost of not allowing yourself the freedom to at least think and brainstorm and, and consider what other things might be. Now, maybe it's going to be an emotional cost. Maybe it's going to be a psychological like cost or, or a toll that it takes on things. Maybe stress or being away from your family and you really want to work at home, or maybe it's a purpose that's inside of you and you really want to follow that passion and purpose. Not everything is a financial cost. Some things that take tolls in other ways. So really at the heart of all of it, I want you to keep in mind that the big goal here is your personal well-being and your happiness. So don't let a limited mindset or being overly planned out and perfectionistic or having so much fear about some of these unknown, maybe financial things or other things, don't let these things get in the way of what your personal well-being is. So again, don't let your fears limit your future. Um, select some of the homework items that we've discussed 
maybe it's looking up job postings and descriptions. Maybe it's seeing how much um, some jobs would pay. Maybe it is seeing how much insurance costs, whatever aligns with what you need. I want you to select those things and take some action on them. Okay, so go ahead and take the steps that will help you to create the future that you want. And we'll see you in the next episode.